But maybe the thing we need to be thankful for the most is to sit around and talk about how good God has been. That we have salvation and security in the eternal sense. Maybe that's something that needs to be noticed too. Yeah, that's something that is true every year and yet is something that is everlasting. But isn't that just more reason to be thankful for it? Sometimes because something is ever-present, we kind of forget that it's there and forget to be thankful for it. But ultimately, that's the thing we need to be thankful for the most because that's the thing that doesn't go away. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775... The Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's report today comes from the book of Psalms. We're going to do a psalm of thanksgiving. I mean, yeah, that was kind of obvious that we were going to do something along those lines with this giant banner behind me. But yeah, we, we're going to do a psalm of thanksgiving. That just seemed obvious to me. So we're going to go ahead and delve into psalm number 100. So we'll go ahead and look at that here. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with jubilation. Come before him with rejoicing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness is to all generations. This psalm is just a, a great outpouring of gratitude for the things that God has done. And it actually, despite the fact that it's a song, it's very, very descriptive. In the, It's got a very deep theological meaning to it because it starts out just kind of as a generic call to praise and thanksgiving. Shout to, joyfully to the Lord all the earth and then serve God with jubilation. Come with him with rejoicing. But you see, because it's going to get into Thanksgiving, and it's actually called a psalm of Thanksgiving, yet for the first two verses, you don't see the word thanks or Thanksgiving or gratitude. But that shows where gratitude's supposed to come from, doesn't it? You know, sometimes when you're a kid, you learn to say thank you even though you're not really thankful. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they're a kid. They haven't learned that kind of stuff yet. They don't have the wisdom, maturity, and perspective to truly be grateful for some of the things that they have. I mean, if air's always been available to you, it doesn't occur to you to be thankful for it. And so, especially if you're a kid that lives in a, a really rich country and has just kind of had everything that they needed, they don't really think about being thankful for things like their clothes or their house or their parents. You know, you're not thankful for having both your mom and your dad until you meet somebody that doesn't have that. And it suddenly dawns on you that that's something that's pretty amazing and, and pretty rare and that's something that not everybody has the opportunity to have. And then gaining that perspective allows you to have that Thanksgiving. That's what these first two verses are about. Come before the Lord with jubilation and rejoicing. You see, that's a true spirit of thanksgiving. That is acknowledging and noticing that God didn't have to do the things that he did for you. That you have the things that God has blessed you with, and that is something that is worthy of rejoicing. It's not something that was owed to you. It's not something that you have by default. It's something that God conveyed to you. Therefore, the natural reaction to that should be shouts of jubilation and rejoicing. And then the third verse gets into knowing that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. And so this dives deeper into the reason for our thanksgiving. Because ultimately it goes back to the Lord being God. It's that simple. 
the fact that God is all powerful and the creator of the universe, and he is an all powerful, all knowing being that cared enough to make you. I mean, isn't that by itself, even if you ignore everything else, if you had no other blessings other than that, isn't that a reason for celebration? That God cared enough about you to give you the gift of life. I mean, that's big enough by itself. And then he goes into all of the things that God is, that he has made us and not ourselves. Aren't you thankful that you didn't make yourself? I know I certainly am. I would have screwed me up horribly bad. Not that I'm perfect now, even though I was made perfect. I, I'm not now. Can you imagine if I made myself? I would have been so horrible at that. <laughs> and then it goes into sort of the symbolic language of being the sheep and the people of his pasture. You know, the sheep, probably a lot of them lack an appreciation for the shepherd. It's probably true. That if all they've ever known is life with a shepherd, they probably don't really have any gratitude for him. He's kind of always been there. He kind of just bats them around when he needs them to go somewhere. But all of a sudden when there's a wolf and the, she the shepherd, the shepherd, I don't know why I can't talk today, and the shepherd chases him off, well, maybe then if the sheep were self-aware and had human thoughts, had the ability or reason, you'd be pretty grateful for the shepherd in that moment, wouldn't he? When he realizes that the reason that he always has green grass to eat is because the shepherd is steering him towards that grass and steering him towards the water he needs to sustain him, that he knows where all the good grazing spots are, and he's the one that's rotating that out season by season to make sure he has the best so that the sheep can grow. The sheep's probably not aware that that's what the shepherd is doing when he's herding him around. But that's exactly what's happening. And so if the sheep had some self-awareness, he would realize there's a lot to be grateful to the shepherd for. And maybe that's how most people go through life, is that there's a whole lot of people that don't realize how much God does for them. That they just go through life totally unaware that there is a shepherd that cares for them, that is looking after them and protecting them and watching over them and providing for them, all of those things. And they're just oblivious to it. And you know what, gang? Some of us that are Christians and read our Bibles and all that, sometimes we're oblivious to it too. Sometimes we forget about it. Sometimes it's just not in the forefront of our mind and because of that it gets put on the back burner. Sometimes that is life for us. But this sense of rejoicing and thanksgiving is the counter to that. That's why it's so important. Is it important to be grateful to people because it's a nice sentiment? Yeah, it is. It's always good to be thanked. When somebody thanks you for something that you did and you earned it, that is a good feeling. But is the feeling what's important? Or is it important that somebody acknowledge that they did something for somebody else? Because that instills humility and spirituality and a sense of needing someone else. It instills a sense of community. There's all these other benefits. Really being thankful, it's not for God's sake. I mean, he's God. He's all-powerful. He doesn't need anything. Being thankful is for us. It helps us to acknowledge who God really is and who we are. And ultimately, that's the reason that this is so important. And then he finishes off in verses 4 and 5 where it talks about entering his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. From beginning to end, whenever we are in God's presence, that is cause for celebration and thanksgiving. That is what that verse is saying. That the, the whole visit from the time that we are in God's presence throughout eternity, that is cause for giving thanks to God for the things that he has given to us. And then he kind of ends here with more of the reasons why we should be thankful. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness is to all generations. And so this communicates a couple of truths. First of all, God is morally good. We're thankful not only that God exists and he is who he is, but also that he is a good God that cares about us and loves us. The second is that his mercy is everlasting. That may be the thing we need to be most thankful for, me especially, that he has a, a mercy that does not end. Because if his mercy ever gave out, I would be up a creek without a paddle and so would the rest of us. And then finally, 
His faithfulness is to all generations. The blessings don't just stop with us. They continue for future generations of humans and for the past ones as well. His blessings and His faithfulness don't have an expiration date. God is eternal, and because of that, His promises are eternal as well. Those are all things to celebrate and all things that we can look and say thank, uh, say thank you to our Father for. You know, maybe this Thanksgiving, when we're all with our family and thinking about all the things that we're thankful for, it's great to be thankful for the food. It's great to be thankful that we made it through this, I, I mean, just mess and a hurricane of a year, or at least almost have. But maybe the thing we need to be thankful for the most is to sit around and talk about how good God has been. That we have salvation and security in the eternal sense. Maybe that's something that needs to be noticed too. Yeah, that's something that is true every year and yet is something that is everlasting, but isn't that just more reason to be thankful for it? Sometimes because something is ever-present, we kind of forget that it's there and forget to be thankful for it. But ultimately, that's the thing we need to be thankful for the most because that's the thing that doesn't go away. Be thankful for all your blessings, but for the eternal ones, maybe just take a little effort this year to remember those in your Thanksgiving festivities as well. Hope you enjoy the holiday with your family. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.